Hello, good morning or good evening, depending on where you're at. British expat in the Philippines again. Just making sure my mic was on. You know, when I first came to the Philippines some hmm, nine and a half years ago, my first morning that I spent here, I remember vividly. I remember sitting in a glass window, or should I say near a glass window, on a little stool in a 7-Eleven store here in Nigilian. And I looked out with my new eyes at the country that I had just come to, irrespective of whom I had chosen to meet. And I looked out the window and I thought, John, my goodness, what have I done? I got on a plane in Australia, Melbourne, Tullamarine, and I took a one-way ticket, effectively, to the Philippines. I think at the time, I think it was a return ticket, but it was an open-ended one in the sense that it could be cashed in if I had decided to stay. The first night I spent in a hotel in San Fernando, but I had travelled the next morning to Nagilin to where my 2B partner was going to be able to be spoken with. And while I sat in 7-Eleven and looked out and I thought, my God, what have I done? I travelled nine and a half hours or so to come here. Temperature was like living in Darwin. Those that know Australia, Darwin's temperatures are pretty much the same as northern Queensland. Hot, humid, no let off really, except the rainy season. In fact, they have an identical type of climate. The heat didn't bother me, but looking out through my new set of eyes at what I arrived at, was an absolute culture shock. My best way to describe it, and I've never been there, it would be like going to somewhere like Peru or Ecuador, somewhere probably more like Peru, because everything looked so strange. I mean, the concept I'd seen, tut tuts or tuk tuks or whatever they want to call them in Thailand, and I, I'd seen them, tricycles, in other Asian countries, but to see so many parked out the front, zooming past the window, and at the time, nearly 10 years ago, there weren't as many modern cars on the road. There were, there were cars that I were familiar with, models anyway, but they weren't the new four-wheel drives that you see all the way around in normal course of events in the West. Since then, of course, they're everywhere. Everyone's got a new car, almost, it seems. But it was a culture shock. I mean, six and a half hours drive from Manila in a provincial bus, aircon, but looking out the window in the darkness as the world whizzed past you and as the night became morning, we arrived here in San Fernando. And it's always a bit of a haze now when I look back at it, but I thought, where are all the shops? We whizzing past a few lights along the way 
and they appeared to be little sheds on the side of the road. And that's exactly what they were. Anything thrown together with a bit of bamboo or or corrugated iron, it was definitely a, an eye-opener in the sense that it added to my, I suppose, concern as to what I'd let myself into. And those that haven't been to the Philippines, it is a shock. I've been to places like Singapore, Hong Kong, Bangkok, Thailand, India, and I've also been to Japan on this side of the world, as obviously as well as Australia and New Zealand. I remember when I once flew up to Japan. I had a couple of days in Japan before I headed off to Europe. And the same kind of situation in a much more orderly way greeted me in Japan in the sense that things that are familiar to you, like a bank emblem, a, a post office emblem, a supermarket that looks like a supermarket, and maybe um, knowing where a chemist is. All these things were alien especially even in Japan. You'd go down little streets that appeared to have nothing, nothing more than homes all the way along, and suddenly you'd come to a section of the road that had all these machines. And they're all lit up at any given time of the day, especially at night time you'd spot them. And they're vendor machines. And I thought, my goodness, Japanese just, everything's in a vendor machine. Well, here in the Philippines, the shock is that the places appears, especially in the countryside, what so many call here the provinces. And it has changed in the last 10 years. Properties that were just held together with our call a band-aid have become demolished and the proper building's gone up and maybe a hardware store or a small superettes gone in. But often the, the the tire repair shop doesn't look like one. It just looks like a shack. And there's trucks and cars parked out the front having their wheels changed. The building itself doesn't seem to matter to the Filipino trying to make a living. And that is that whatever holds their gear to do the job, that's where they hang their sign. And often it is just a canvas sign saying tire repair or what do they call it? They have another name for it. I can't remember what it is. And the same with a sari sari store. What is a sari sari store when you first come here? It's often just a little window in the front of a building with a few signs advertising maybe Coke or a cigarette brand or maybe even washing washing soda. But you eventually get, your mind gets adjusted to the fact that that's what is where you can get yourself a cold drink. That's where you can buy a lot of things that you need in the home. And you start to think initially, so where do people buy their groceries? And then you start to discover they have these things called markets. Nobody tells you about them, but every town has a market of some kind, even if it's a what I can only describe as an open space with a few temporary tents up and people selling fish and meat and vegetables in the shade of the sun. Some of you might be disgusted and say, that's so unhealthy. But it's amazing. It doesn't seem that unhealthy. It just, there's no apparent ice anywhere. There's no apparent refrigeration. Usually it's an esky or full of water and the fish are still often alive, especially if they're tilapia. But most of the food and most of the people who go out shopping, they go out early in the morning. 
They go out in the morning because it's fresher then. And the other time they go out is just before tea time in the evening. You get the splattering of people during the day, but generally speaking, it's early in the morning and late in the afternoon. And it's late afternoon when they've just finished work and they're rushing round the market to pick up the food that they've earned for the day and take it home and cook it. So there is no need for a refrigerator in their homes. They may well have a portable fan on a stand, but often it's not even that. It's often one of these 12 volt things that you plug into a power PowerPoint, or what I call it, a, a light socket. And that's the only thing that they have. And it's often got an LED attached to it. But that's the only form of lighting that some of these homes have got. And I call them homes because that's what they are to them. We would probably think, I can't live in that. And many of you, I'm sure, do feel that way. But as time goes on and the families become a little bit more affluent, the homes become a little bit more tolerable in, from a Western point of view. They always will often appear unfinished inside and open to the elements above in the sense that they have no ceiling in them yet. And that might be for many years until they can afford to put a ceiling in. But when they invite you over for a party, birthday party, a christening, you can't help but notice it's all about the people, the people and their generosity, how they will, they'll give you the food off their plate and they'll go without themselves just to show their hospitality. But that, in a sense, is the essence that you have to get your head round when you first come here. And those that fly in from America, Europe with, dare I say, a, a bit of the yobbo kind of idea. And I'm not saying all of you do that, but there are a lot that treat the place as a, a place to exploit. And they just hang around. They, the magnet is the bars, the girls, and the bar fines paying for women. And that's such a small part of any country. All countries have that side, the seedy side of, of life. And if that's what tends to attract some of the visitors to the Philippines, it's sad to think that that's what it is. And I hope that it doesn't continue to be seen as a, a place for people to come and attempt to be maybe less than moral. There is a push here in the government more recently and there's a lot of media about catching guys that come here with a, a bad intent. So guys, if you think you're going to come here and be a naughty boy, then think again because you probably won't get past the airport security and you'll be just put back on the plane and sent back. They send back people every day who arrive here. Don't think that you've arrived in the backwaters of the world and nobody knows what and where you've come from. You can fill in all the forms and lie your teeth off, but they have connections. Interpol, they have all those things. They know what you've done before you even arrived. So if you think you're going to come in the back door, come in somewhere quiet like Cebu, or fly even into Manila, you're going to have a big shock when they tell you, I'm sorry, we're not going to let you stay. So if you come here for that kind of intention, I would give it a big miss. Don't waste your money. But if you come here, like I did, to make it your home, to hope that all your dreams will come to fruition. Not all, but some do. And 
that you enjoy every day being here. And the Philippines is a great place to come to and definitely a wonderful place to retire simply because there's nothing to worry about. As long as you keep out of trouble, there is, no, there is nothing to worry about. You wake up, every day is a different day. You'll meet people you didn't meet before. If you're a friendly guy like myself, you'll talk to everybody until you start to feel maybe you're giving them a nosebleed and then you make a hasty retreat. But most people will say hello to you every day and they'll try and have a conversation with you. And it's fun to have that conversation because we need as human beings, we need to interact. And it's certainly not a shortage of interaction between ourselves and the local population. So you enjoy your stay here. I hope you plan your stay here better than I did when I first came. I did all the wrong things, but it still worked out for me. And the most important thing is that you learn, as I've always said, to say no. And sometimes your heartstrings are pulled both ways. You want to help, but you can't really. You can't help the whole world. So be very conscious of the fact that it actually is illegal to pay beggars. So just be careful. Don't, if you, if you feel embarrassed, just say no budget. Sorry, no budget. And they will understand. They might think, who knows, they might think what a miserable sod he is. But the reality is it avoids feeling that you've done the wrong thing. So if you like this video, don't forget to give us a thumbs up, subscribe, watch the, watch the ads because it helps the channel and it brings you here because more people watch it, more advertising, more people watch it. It's not about the money we make. It's about trying to give you a more down-to-earth impression of what life is like here in the Philippines, especially in the province. Bye now.